Good morning and welcome to this short prayer service with the gospel reading, an address and some prayers for the second Sunday of Easter, commonly called Low Sunday. So instead of a celebration of Holy Communion or morning prayer, it's simply going to be a reading an address and some prayers. So I do hope you will stay with us and enjoy being part of our worship here this morning. reading from the Gospel according to St. John. When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples were, were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. 
Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On one occasion, Jesus was teaching his followers about his impending death, resurrection, and ascension. And his loyal friend was confused and was trying to understand the teaching. And of all those present, he was the one to ask, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? He wanted to understand because he wanted to follow. And the person I refer to, of course, is Thomas. And when you mention the name of Thomas, one immediately thinks, doubting Thomas. We can understand the way Thomas must have felt. He had missed out when Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. For him, life was still hopeless. His hopes had died on Calvary. Unless I see for myself, I will not believe, he said. In all our lives, we have all gone through the same experience. We have trusted and we've been hurt. We have loved and we have lost. We have reached out in reconciliation to others, only to have them reject us. We have all been where Thomas was, hurt and afraid to trust again. We have all doubted. But doubt does not have to be like that. Doubt does not have to destroy our faith because there is a remedy for doubt. There is help for us when we find ourselves filled with questionings and with doubt, when the world seems to collapse in upon us. And if we take Thomas, for example, Thomas made the mistake we all make. He thought he could do it on his own, Devastated by the death of Jesus, he separated himself from the other disciples. He sought solitude in pain, isolation for his loneliness, and he thought he could maintain his trust in God all on his own. But what we see is that his doubts came from being absent from the disciples, from being alone when Jesus appeared to them on that first Easter day. But his doubts were answered in the presence of other disciples. It was only in the fellowship of others, only through the body of Christ, that Thomas found the assurance that he so desperately sought and needed. Put your finger here, Jesus said. See my hands. Reach out your hand and touch me. Do not doubt, but believe. When doubt leads us to look deeper for God or forces us more fully into the fellowship of other Christians, then even doubt can be a blessing. Because in the midst of doubt, Jesus is there. 
Now, unfortunately, during this pandemic and the restrictions faced upon us, we cannot meet together as Christians. So we tend to have to go it alone. And these online services are one way of keeping us in touch with the church and with each other. And even when things seem dark, a light will shine. And it was Jesus who said, I am the light of the world. Faith that serves us for a lifetime is not a faith that has never experienced doubts. Because if that were the case, I certainly wouldn't be standing here this morning. Instead, it is a faith that constantly searches, faith that trusts even when the worst happens. And Jesus knew that was the kind of faith we needed. And that's why he said, peace be with you, do not doubt, but believe. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that is his promise for us. Blessed are you and I, for in believing we have the offer of a better life and an eternal life in his presence. Today, in this short service of reading, address and prayer, our Saviour, risen from the dead, gives us strength to face whatever lies ahead of us, doubts and all. And we do that in the knowledge that he is with us now and through all eternity. Amen. So let us pray. The Collect for the second Sunday of Easter, Low Sunday. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your risen Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we pray for the witness of the Gospel throughout the world, we give thanks for the work of the Church in this land and especially in this diocese. We pray for Michael, our Bishop, and all your clergy and people, and all who bring others to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in the world, especially those caught up in war, violence, civil unrest or abuse. And we pray for the leaders of all nations, that they may work so that people may live in freedom, in peace and in safety. We pray for our President, Michael D. Higgins, and for those who lead us locally and nationally, especially during this trying time of coping with the pandemic.
pray for those who work continuously to provide us with our needs and to keep us in safety. For shopkeepers, bus drivers, all who help us in many ways, and the members of Angarda Shir Khanna. May each of them be kept safe in their daily duties as they serve us in different ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we pray for those who are sick, those known to us and those unknown, those who have asked us to pray for them, and those who have no one to pray for them. And in this group of parishes, we continue our prayers for Alan, Fia, Trina, Mary, Anne, Keith, Helen, Logan, and Jerry. And in a moment of silence, let us remember before God all those for whom we ought to pray. We give thanks for all who care for them in many ways, for doctors, nurses, carers, family members, and especially those suffering with COVID-19, and their doctors and nurses, and those who care for them. May all who care for the sick shine as lamps of hope, even in the darkest hours of distress and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Christ was risen from the dead, he opened for each of us the gates of eternal life. And so today, we remember before God all those who once worshipped with us and are now at rest. We also remember at this time the life of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, recently departed. And with thanksgiving, we remember family members, friends, and colleagues, especially Mervyn McCullough, priest, James Kenny, Harry Griffith, Luda Pierpoint Sheridan, and all whose anniversaries occur this week. May we, with them and all your saints, share in the joys of your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, I invite you to join with me in the Christian family prayer as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, raise you up to walk with him in the newness of his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and those whom you love, both in this world and in the world to come, this day and forevermore. Amen.